This is a perfect soldering joint. This one has too much solder. This one looks like it's a cold joint and this one looks like it's starving. We've all made at least one of these mistakes and if you're here, that's probably because you're trying to level up your soldering game. I've been doing this for 15 years or probably more at this point and I've learned quite a few tips and tricks that could turn anyone into a pro. So let me show you and trust me, it's actually pretty simple. And before we get started, make sure you are in a well ventilated space. Open up a window or run a fume extractor. This one is not the best one, but it's better than nothing. Before we jump into soldering, I need to tell you a little bit about solder. I'm gonna keep this extremely general. You could make an entire video just talking about solder, so I really wanna keep it very brief. There are basically two types of solder, leaded solder and lead-free solder. Lead-free solder is a tiny bit more difficult to work with as it melts at higher temperatures. Then there's the leaded solder, which is a lot more forgiving and a lot easier to work with. So if you are a beginner, it is definitely easier to start with leaded solder. The next thing you need to know is that there are different widths of solder. They're meant for different purposes. If you're soldering large wires, you need to have a very thick core or rather a thick diameter of solder. If you're soldering tiny little components, you have to go for a very thin solder. So, Let's jump into the first step of actual soldering. All right, before soldering, we've got some cleaning to do. For this purpose, I utilize 91% isopropyl alcohol. Anything above 70% will do. 99 would be preferable. I get my hands on 91 pretty easily, so this is what I utilize. This is perfectly good enough. I have mine in a dispensal bottle where it is super easy to actually dose just the tiniest bit. And I utilize it so much that this becomes extremely, extremely handy. Isopropyl alcohol is great for cleaning electronics and PCBs. One, it evaporates really, really, really quick. So if you soak your electronics in isopropyl alcohol, it will evaporate very quickly. That said, do turn off your electronics before using anything at all on them. Just a caution. <laughs> Take the board that you're going to be soldering, the spot that you're going to be soldering, and make sure the metal is clean. There is no buildup, there's no gunk. This is the point of this step. Isopropyl alcohol will basically break down any dirt that's on top of the metal. Now, don't worry about scrubbing it crazy. Just make sure there's no big buildup on top of the joint that you're going to be soldering. Now the next step arguably is probably one of the most important. And to be honest, here's a story. I wish somebody told me to use flux a long time ago because I was misled and led to believe that flux is not necessary. It is probably the most important step in the whole entire procedure. Now you might be saying to yourself, there is already flux within the core of the solder and you would be absolutely correct. For majority of soldering, this is enough. That said, if you wanna make a really, really pretty joint, flux cleans and preps your pad as you're soldering. And it is kind of like a magical assistant that just simply guides these, the solder to exactly where it needs to be. Flux activates under temperature, so it basically does nothing until you are applying heat to it. And it is super simple to use, just put a tiniest bit of flux on the pad or on the through hole component that you're going to be soldering. It's kind of like a guarantee. Basically, you might not need flux because there is flux in the core of the solder, but it is definitely a nice to have. And it will make your job so much easier. If you do anything, this is probably the most important step, I would argue, to get a very, very beautiful, I would call it even a perfect soldering joint. Now, if there is something even more important, it's probably setting the right temperature on your soldering iron. Too cold and the solder just simply blobs up and it doesn't actually spread and doesn't adhere properly to the metals. Too hot and you will burn your components, you will scorch them. So, how do you actually know what temperature to set? Well, look at your solder. If it is lead free, I would say start around 350 Celsius, go up to 370, more or less in that range. If your solder is leaded, 
go to about 320 up to 350. Now the temperatures will slightly vary depending on the solder type you have. So look at the data sheet, look at the manufacturer spec, but that's probably a good range to start with. Now you also need to adjust for the type of job you're doing. If you're soldering tiny little components that are very, very small, you probably need less heat. If you're soldering a large, big wire that is connected to a ground, yeah, you're gonna have a lot more trouble heating that pad, right? So you have to set your temperature a tiny bit higher. Now do be careful because again, you could go too high and you could scorch and burn your components basically, or you could go too low and the solder just was going to act like it's a solid basically. So adjust based on the job and even if you're soldering a header and that last pin is ground, you probably have to actually go up in temperature for that specific pin. At least that's what I do in order to have all of them soldered quite perfectly. But there's also a gotcha. How do you actually transfer the heat from the iron to the pad and to the joint? That matters a lot and that's probably the thing that most people mess up. And by the way, if you want to learn soldering, you'll probably love my micro eraser project. It's a little DIY kit that you build yourself. There's a tiny bit of soldering involved. So hey, you'll get to solder. Everything you need to make one of these comes inside of a kit. And the best part, at the end, you will have a really, really, really fun project that you could play with, that you can have fun with and experiment. And it's fully open sourced. So hey, and fully hackable too. You can actually change the firmware, write your own code and your own logic. And the gameplay is actually pretty fun too. The micro racers spin out when they hit a banana, speed up when they hit a red mushroom and slow down on that muddy puddle. Plus I'm building out a private community. Lifetime access is $149, but yours comes free with a purchase of the micro racer. Use the link below and make sure to check it out. You could grab one at stockaprototype.com the first time you build this and then get to drive around your desk, you'll be hooked. Trust me. Now, speaking of soldering on the micro racer, probably the biggest thing that a lot of people mess up is how they transfer heat from a soldering iron to the actual part that they are soldering. This is super, super critical. Once your soldering iron is hot enough, you have to make sure to properly clean it and then tin the actual tip itself. Without tinning the tip, if you're putting it down on a pad, there's not much heat transfer. So the point of the tinned tip is not to put solder onto the pad, but instead use the solder as a transfer, as a heat transfer, basically a liquid that's transferring the heat from the soldering tip to the actual pad and the joint that you're going to be soldering. Now, again, and I want to stress this, it is not for actually soldering, it is to simply transfer the heat. And in order to properly clean your tip, I highly recommend a brass wool cleaner just like this one here. Add a little bit of solder to your iron, clean the tip again and again, make it nice and shiny. Then prime your tip with just the tiniest bit of solder. That solder is what's going to help you transfer the heat to the actual joint. So once you've tinned your iron, get that pad and the joint really nice and warm. And then let the actual pad and the joint melt the new solder. So then you're going to take the solder and actually start feeding the pad and the joint. You're not feeding the iron anymore. You're not trying to melt the solder with the iron. That's not the point here. Point is to warm up the pad and the joint and the lead and then feed that solder directly to the pad and the joint itself. You're melting the solder with the joint, not with the iron. Now, if this step is taking longer than three seconds, that means your soldering iron is not hot enough. But if it is charring and burning, that means your iron is way too hot. So that's how you know if you have to go up or down in temperature on the iron itself. So once you've actually fed the solder into the joint, you're looking for this beautiful bell-like shaped, reverse bell, I guess, maybe you could call it, and you're looking for a shiny, nice surface. 
If it is bulging and it is basically bulging to the outside, that means you fed too much solder. If it is looking empty or it has a hole, it's basically a starving joint, right? There's not enough solder, add a tiny bit more. And if it is misshaped and just weird, odd looking, not a beautiful shape like this, that means it is probably a cold joint. Good news, it is easy to fix it. Let me just walk you quickly through all the scenarios one by one. If you've used too much solder, there is a very quick and easy way to fix that. One, take your soldering wick, and this is basically just a copper wire really with a little bit of flux. So you can utilize simply a copper wire if you don't have any wick. Take the wick, apply it to the joint that has too much solder. Take your iron and warm up the wick from the outside. Again, pre-tin your iron, make sure there's a good heat transfer. Touch it and let the wick absorb the solder and that ends up with less solder on your joint. If you see a cold joint and your solder is uneven in spaces or has holes or whatever, then add a tiny bit more flux, heat up the whole entire thing again and let it remelt. So to quickly recap, the perfect soldering joint starts with the clean prepped surface, flux, a properly tinned iron, remember, heat the pad and the joint. Don't melt the solder with the actual iron unless you're of course tinning it. That's the only purpose for melting directly with the iron. Feed the solder directly to the joint. Let it cool down slowly and nicely and smoothly and you'll have a perfect soldering joint. I hope you learned something. Subscribe if you have. Check out StockUpPrototype.com if you want to support the channel and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.